and spirit. And tonight we, I want us to look at um, the, the storm. So we're going to look at uh, beginning in Psalm 107, and then we'll go up to Mark chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles in the Psalm 107, and starting at verse 23 to 30, it says, Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens, and they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, <coughs> and are at their wit's end. They, then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brings them out of their distress. He calms the storm, so that its waves are still. Then they are glad, because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. And then if we turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 35. A familiar passage. On... Mark chapter 4 verse 35 On the same day when evening had come he said to them let us cross over to the other side Now when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and sea obey him? And may God bless the, the reading of his word. And when I read that the story there of Jesus in the boat with the storm, I always think, of course, of, of Mr. Bolter. And when he would say, Neither on land nor air, but in the middle of the ocean. I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course we give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is God. And Jesus being God is fundamental to our Christian beliefs. And when we look at Jesus calming the storm, he is revealing who he is. He is revealing that he is God. Calming the storm was not any old miracle that Jesus just thought, oh, I'll just do this. It was planned. It was a miracle where Jesus reveals that he is God because over and over and over again in the Old Testament, there is an emphasis on how the God of creation controls two of the most powerful forces in creation, the wind and the sea. In Job 26, God shows his might when he rebukes and stills the sea. In Psalm 104, verse 1 to 7, it shows how great the Lord is by declaring that he has power over the winds and he rebukes the waters and the sea that he has made. And we all know that God parted the Red Sea in the book of Exodus for the Israelites to walk through. God naturally has power over his creation. But have you ever noticed the similarities between Psalm 107 and the calming of the storm in the synoptics in Matthew, Mark and Luke? 
the, par the parallels between what the God of Israel does in Psalm 107 and Jesus stilling the storm are really, really incredible. In Psalm 107, starting there at verse 3, we have sailors in a ship. Stormy winds and waves. Their courage melts and fades away. They cry out to the Lord, Yahweh. The Lord stills the storm. The waves of the sea are quiet. And then when you read in Matthew, Mark and Luke, Jesus is the account of Jesus stilling the storm. The disciples are in the boat. You've got the stormy wind and waves. The disciples are afraid, just like the sailors were afraid. The disciples cry out to Jesus, just like the sailors cried out to Jesus. Jesus stills the storm, just like Yahweh the Lord stilled the storm. And there was great calm. This, this is more than a coincidence. As God is revealing who he is in Christ Jesus. How can the man Jesus of Nazareth have such power, such mastery over creation? A power that the Old Testament reserves for the Lord alone. The best explanation is that Jesus is the God of Israel. Revealed, sorry, the God of Israel is revealed in Jesus Christ in flesh and blood. And in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 43, the disciples asked, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? In context, the question implies that Jesus had not merely performed an incredible miracle. Jesus had displayed a power that the Old Testament repeatedly attributed to God Almighty alone. And what is also incredible about Jesus' actions, here calming the wind and the sea is Jesus does not pray to God to make the wind and the sea stop. Jesus gives no impression here. He's depending on an outside source um, for help. Instead, Jesus himself simply commands the wind and the sea to stop, to be still. And the wind and the sea obey him. The accounts of the storm reveal Jesus' identity as the Lord God, the creator of the universe. And it happens in Matthew, Mark and Luke's gospel. Jesus reveals his divine identity in a very Jewish way using the Old Testament to reveal who he is by manifesting the same power over the wind and sea that God showed when he created the world and saved Israel in the Exodus. This is incredible power at work. Yes, Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is also human. He does fall asleep in the boat. The disciples had to wrestle on more than one occasion about who Jesus is and Jesus' uh, Jesus's identity. Matthew 8 verse 27, they said, What sort of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? I mean, how would you react if you were in that boat? And you were sinking in that boat and in that storm. And Jesus gets up and says, peace, be still. In the Greek, be muzzled. He muzzles the storm like a dog that is vicious would be muzzled. We all have to ask at some point, who is Jesus? When you encounter the Lord... You want to know more about him. 
when you've tasted of the Lord, when you've seen His power and what He can do, your response is, I must know this man. I must get to grips with the Gospels and with who Jesus Christ is. The disciples are absolutely amazed at what Jesus has done. And when you look at your own lives, can we say, yes, I am amazed by the Lord when He did this. I am amazed by the Lord when He did that. As Christ broke in and revealed who he is and demonstrated his power. Some of the disciples here, remember, are seasoned fishermen. And they are frightened by the severity of the storm. I love that, the severity of the storm. <laughs> Sounding like a Puritan. The, the ship is rocking and reeling. Is being pounded. The boat is filling with water. And that's, you know, real fear when you really believe that you are, are going to drown and die at any moment. It's a violent storm and it's dark. It's night time. They could not see where they were. They couldn't even see how close to the shore they were. They couldn't even see if any other boats were there on the lake. They were in danger and they feared for their lives. When professional fishermen are fearing the sea, <clears throat> you know that's a scary situation to be in. It is like when you're on a plane and you're flying off to the States and the pilot panics. <laughs> you know, this isn't good. You know, it was a traumatic time for these disciples. They could die in this storm at any minute and Jesus is fast asleep. <laughs> See, as they're in the storm, I think here they're getting traumatized. And in trauma, what do you have? You have disruption, you have upheaval, you have threat, and you have powerlessness. <laughs> Sounds a little bit like COVID, doesn't it? Disruption, upheaval, threat, powerlessness. Anyway, and they, they can't get out of this situation. They have no escape. And when threat comes towards us, some of us freeze, some of us fight, and some of us run away. Here, they can't, the ones who want to run away can't run away. They're stuck in a traumatic situation. And very often, when in a traumatic situation, what happens? You can't think. Logic, reason, goes out of the window. And you even say the wrong thing and forget what you know is right and true. And your brain can just jump around all over the place or you just literally freeze and you can just run around in, in a circle when something confusing, confusing and traumatic is happening. And here the disciples, verse 38, they wake Jesus up shouting, don't you care if we drown? And at times, we can all feel like shouting, God, Jesus, don't you care? Are you sleeping? Wake up, God, and do something. The disruption, the upheaval, the threat, the powerlessness, I can't cope with it, I can't think logically and in a straight logical line. The violent storm in the night that we go through, whether by our own doing, whether it's brought on by Satan or whether it's sent by God as a test, the storms we go through can, in, some situ in a, most situations, draw us closer to the Lord. And sometimes when we come through the storm, we can look back and we say, yeah, the Lord had me there. I didn't realize what the Lord was doing, but He was in it. And He kept me safe and He led me. But sometimes... Sometimes the storms we go through 
We come through it and we are completely, I have no idea what was going on there. It's like your whole life has gone out of the window. And there's just no easy answers to give in that situation. And I know one person at the moment I've been speaking to gone through horrendous things. From childhood into her teenage years, as she grew up, horrendous. There's no easy answer to why that trauma happened to her. But she says, I know one thing. The Lord has got me. The Lord has got me. And one day I, when I reach glory, I may understand. But right now, I have no understanding of why I went through what I did and why I was bought and sold the way in which I was. And for the disciples, they go through the storm with Jesus because he's revealing who he is. He's revealing to them that he is God. And, and he is dealing with, these, with the disciples' fear. And here the Greek is excessive fear. It's not like you jump, just, 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 just jump. <laughs> it is like this overpowering, paralyzing, excessive fear. They go through this. The disciples had to learn to keep their faith in Jesus no matter what they go through. It was maybe, I don't know, maybe a training ground for later on when they would have to stand and be martyred. They had faced death in the storm and Christ had rescued them. And now, and later on in life, and most of them apart from John, they get martyred. And of course, the, the Holy Spirit, they had the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit anoints them and empowers them to be a witness, to be a martyr for the Lord. And they die in the Christian faith. You know, they were believing. You know, in, back in the storm, they're believing that Jesus didn't care for them. When they had seen Jesus, they had seen Jesus cast out demons. They'd seen Jesus heal diseased, ridden bodies. Heal sickness, forgive sin, turn water into wine, raise the dead. But all of that has gone out of their minds as they enter into a traumatic situation. They should have known a storm on Galilee was nothing for King Jesus to deal with. The disciples' problem was they took their eyes off of Jesus, off of the Lord, who had called them, had called them to be disciples. And they look at their circumstances more than focusing on Jesus and trusting in him. When it was Jesus' idea to cross the lake, the disciples had left everything to follow Jesus. They'd left their businesses to follow Christ. And now they think they will die and Jesus doesn't care. And what I love is, Jesus calls us and he doesn't abandon us. Once he has called us, when the road we, we are on gets stormy and disruptive, and we have no power to do anything because we're powerless, all we can do is simply trust in him. Lord, I do not understand. I cannot see a way forward, but I am trusting in your name. I am trusting that you got me in this. I am broken, bruised, and bandaged, but you have got me. I'm confused. I cannot think straight, but you have got me. Because he is right there at perfect peace in the storm that he is leading you through as Jesus is God looking to see who will simply trust in him when everything is just going stormy and crazy. We have a mighty God who is at perfect peace in the storms of life as he leads us through 
And as he leads us through, <laughs> he's stripping us of who we are. You know, our pride goes out the window when we're reduced to a panicked child state of I'm going to drown, help me. And in it, what I love here is, in this text, we also see the grace of the Lord. He corrects them, and yet he doesn't say, you've messed up, go back home. He doesn't say that. But they keep on following him. And then when they get out of the boat, they're there at Gadaria, they meet the demoniac, and again they see the power of God at work at the bottom of Mount Hermon as God's power works through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus just has to say there to that demon, come out of that man, you unclean spirit. And the man is set free, and he's clothed in his right mind. You see, we see the power of God at work. Through Christ, and we see that Christ is God. As we look back to the Old Testament, confirms the new and vice versa, and we discover the identity of Jesus and who He is. He is God. He has come to save. He calls us to follow Him. He leads us through storms. He is in perfect peace, and we simply trust in Him. And we say, Lord, wherever You lead, I will follow. The cross before me, the world behind me. May we continue to trust in Jesus even when we don't understand. And, and, you know, we want to see, yes, we want to see revival. We want to see a mighty move of the Lord. And the enemy will try and stop that at every twist and every turn. But we keep our anchor in Christ and depending on Him and in Him as He leads us through. The Christian walk is not dull. It's not boring. Yes, we get our scars. We get our bruises. But the Lord is there. And we continually walk with Him. And as we do so, He is glorified. As we simply trust with childlike faith in impossible situations.